theme today is timing and direction, and specifically pulling together threads that have popped up in quite a number of videos recently, including my own and a number of other people's. Um, timing and direction, of course, being this central idea that there are a number of ways that the hands can converge and diverge in ways that are aesthetically pleasing. Most of us play with this pretty much constantly. It's exceptionally hard to come up with poi moves that do not incorporate timing and direction on some level. Um, my good friend Eric E6 uh, recently published a video where he talked specifically about the idea of convergence and divergence in uh, uh, timing and direction and noted that it becomes something of a problem when you're dealing in systems where you have flowers with odd numbers of petals. So, for example, when I'm doing split opposites switching to, say, same time, same direction, and then same time opposites, this works great if I'm playing around in a system wherein I have four anti-spin petals. It lines up really, really well. Um, this is actually a cornerstone of Charlie's Nine Square Theory and uh, his eight-step cap uh, exercises. But if I take the same idea of switching between these time and direction combinations and apply it to, say, a triketra, I quickly find that the symmetry works in a much more bizarre kind of way. That is, if I'm trying to move split time same direction, I have two choices. I can either be in adjacent corners, or I can just pick points where one hand is in between two points and the other hand is at one of those points, which likewise creates some weird, funky symmetry problems. Okay, so how do we play with these odd numbers of petals and make timing and direction make sense? Well, um, here is a possible approach. Um, this is partially inspired by a video that Justin Benson posted this past week. I think it's Justin Benson, if it's not, sorry. Um, wherein he takes pentagrams and arranges them in split opposites. Ah. I always forget this one. Yes. Um, in such a way that they reflect across a horizontal axis. He does this by making one of the pentagrams upside down and the other one right side up, which brought to mind a paper that Surreal had written a couple years ago about timing and direction, specifically noting that one of the byproducts of each of these timing and direction combinations is that there are particular ways that the moves that they create reflect. For example, when I'm working in split time opposites, it reflects the picture that I'm creating across a horizontal axis that basically runs through my shoulders, right? Likewise, if I go into opposite same time, the picture repeats across uh, a vertical axis. Coincidentally enough, the same vertical axis across which my body is symmetrical. Same time, same direction is a little bit easier to stomach. This works no matter what because you're essentially just doubling the picture that you're creating. I can create a picture that has four petals, I can create a picture that has three petals, either which way it works, right? But when you switch into split time same direction, you're creating a picture that reflects across a constantly changing axis. Uh, Surreal himself described the axis that it reflects across as being essentially an infinitely small point in the center, right? You can think of this as being very similar to how a kaleidoscope generates a picture, where there are constant elements that are changing all around that center point, right? Okay, so if we take the idea of timing and direction as being these different types of reflections, here's the idea. We can approach these odd-numbered anti-spin pedals in such a way that they actually create pictures that still work, and we don't have to worry about the weird in-between math that happens there. Let me show you why. I'm going to take a triketra and a one-pedal in-spin as my examples for this. Now, I've mentioned in past videos that I've been thinking of uh, triketras and one pedal end spins as both being 2B moves. That is, there are two different points at which uh, they are pointed down towards the floor, right? Now, this is the case of every little bit of increment of motion that these two moves do. So, for example, if I move my hand an eighth of the way around the circle to 45 degrees, 
it means that my poi has moved twice that distance because overall it has to cover twice the distance that my hand does to generate that triketra. So 45 degrees times 2 gives us 90 degrees. So I know that when my hand has moved out to 45 degrees, the poi is at 90 degrees. Likewise, when my hand moves to 90 degrees, the poi has had to move to uh, 90 degrees times 2, or 180 degrees, straight down. Now bear in mind, I'm not actually talking about the tip of a flower petal or in between two flower petals here. This is some weird place that's in between those two extremes. If, on the other hand, I take my one petal inspin, let's say that my petal's on the bottom, and we start up top, once again, I'm going to move my hand 45 degrees around the circle. So I know that my poi is moving 90 degrees, 45 times 2, but it's moving in the same direction as the hand. When I get there, the poi once again is at 90 degrees, but it's pointed the opposite direction that it was when it was uh, doing the anti-spin flower. However, when I get to my hand at 90 degrees, the poi has moved 180 degrees. Once again, it's pointed straight down. We can also take the top and the bottom point. We know that at the top, both the anti-spin and the in-spin flowers are pointed straight up, right? And likewise, at the bottom, the triketra is cutting across the middle. So we know that the poi is pointed up while the hand is pointed down. And when we go to the one petal in-spin, likewise, it's mid-petal at the bottom. So the poi is pointed up, the hand is pointed down. That means that at this point, this point, this point, and this point, the poi and the hand all have the exact same orientation, whether it is a one petal in-spin or a uh, three petal anti-spin, or in all cases, a two down beat move. You can figure this out too if you want to think purely about the, uh, the petals by uh, basically working out the relative angles of all these patterns, but I personally find that the downbeat method is just a little bit faster for doing this kind of stuff. We take this to its logical conclusion, and we find that we have transition points at each of these locations. Cool, huh? So, let's take another thread from a previous video. That is, that when you couple uh, in-spin and anti-spin flowers that have the same number of downbeats, you wind up with moves that conserve timing and direction. So, say, if I were to start off in split opposites, doing a one-pedal in-spin versus a triketra, my poi are always going to be in split time, same direction. My hands are in split up, right? Okay. So let's take advantage of one of these points of transition and switch into split time same direction. Guess what? Now I'm creating a pattern that reflects perfectly in that method that split time same direction is supposed to, where it's constantly generating a picture that is symmetrical across an infinitely small point in the middle. Okay, so that works. What about if I do one of the uh, transitions off to the side, where it's in that, uh, where the poi is pointed straight down? Well, guess what? As long as I keep my poi in two downbeat moves, they will always be the same timing and direction combination, no matter what timing and direction combination my hands happen to be in. Just to prove the hypothesis, Let's go in the same time, same direction. It's a star David configuration. And likewise, I can switch back into split op. And guess what? I've just taken that odd number of pedal move and taken it through all four timing and direction combinations. And it totally works because those four points that we orient ourselves with, the poi are in exactly the same position, whether it's in-spin or anti-spin. So, this same technique works uh, whether it be, say, a six-pedal anti-spin, um, a pentagon, a pentagram, what have you. So, yeah, thank you for going down that rabbit hole with me, and um, yeah, I, I hope this leads to some fun experimentation out there. Thank you guys for listening, and have a great weekend. Peace.